Uh, first, apologies for the absence of uh, the ministers, Mr. Garcia and Honorable Lola Francis. <coughs> uh, our Tuesday morning is a uh, sub meeting of the cabinet uh, for preparation for their formal meeting on Thursday, and therefore, uh, ministers. Uh, find that their Tuesday mornings are somewhat taken up with business of government. Notwithstanding that, uh, greetings from the Minister Anthony Garcia, who except for that would be here this, this morning. Uh, he's very much a very strong supporter of UTT and education generally. Uh, some of you who may or may not know him. He has spent, I think, his entire life in the business of education, primary education, secondary education, and now he finds himself uh, our advocate at the level of the cabinet in tertiary education. And we continue to be very uh, grateful to him for flying our flag at the level of the government, at the level of the cabinet. In these days when uh, Finance, uh, government financing is short. Um, we need uh, a minister of that stature to wave our flag at the level of the cabinet to ensure that we get a reasonable share of whatever is available to keep our program going. So, although he's not here this morning, I felt I should express our appreciation as UTT for his continued support. His support shows itself in several ways. Uh, for example, he's at least once a week, uh, he meets with me and the president to find out where things are, how things are going. And of course, we keep him informed of all developments. I make that point to really make another point. It's simply this, that UTT, all it is fully financed by the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, we have, and I say this openly, there's been absolutely no interference in how we govern ourselves, what we do, what we don't do. Uh, the government, for want of a better word, is a silent partner who provides all the finance, but deliberately uh, does not interfere in any aspect of the operations and the governance of the University of Trinidad and Tobago. And we're thankful for that, um, because as I'm sure you're aware, if a government is financing all our activities, there is a temptation on their part to get involved in matters of governance, in matters of staffing, uh, and I must say, with conviction um, and a great deal of confidence that the present administration, the present government has not even given a hint that they would like to uh, get involved in any areas like that, leaving the board of governors and the management of UTT entirely on its own to pursue its objectives. And we're very, very uh, thankful for that. So, welcoming, of course, and saying special greeting to His Excellency, the Ambassador, uh, members of the Board of Governors who are here, General Manager Wei, Professor, some of, maybe this, maybe your first or second public appearance. This gentleman is the new president of UDT, Professor Sam. As I did probably see more of him than of me in the future. And other academics, other senior members of staff of Huawei, uh, it is a pleasure being here. Students, special invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. Signing of MOUs. Uh, 
can cover a wide spectrum. <laughs> uh, they can simply be a good PR effort. Two groups signed an MOU, it then filed away, and the only result is that somewhere in the distant past, it is remembered that some kind of MOU was executed between two entities. In our case, this morning, with Hawaii, a leading global information communication technical provider, our, our MOU is a much more serious uh, piece of paper, as it addresses the importance of cross collaboration, strategic alliances, and global partnerships, and the role that these initiatives play in the development of studies, studies and education as a whole. UTT, as part of its initial strategy, when I was the original founder, chairman, and president, going back to 2004, recognized very, very early that two things. One, Trinidad and Tobago is a relatively small country. And sometimes we don't like to say this, but I say it, <laughs> relatively unimportant in the world of, as we now know the world. We have influence, but we are small. And we are part of the Caribbean, but within the context of what's influencing the world, what is making things go on or not go on in the world, we play a, probably a very small, a very small part. And therefore, in one of the things that UTT had was to ensure that we don't become a very small, inward-looking parochial university that simply follows that pattern and develop almost an inferiority complex thing where we are small in a very small country and there's a very limit, limited role that we can play in education and in research and community development. Since its in inception, UTT in recognition that had to move away from that has valued the contribution and impact of strategic partnerships both to affect the lives of our students and institutions as a whole. The university has forged partnerships with both local tertiary education and industry partners, as well as global partners. These collaborations have resulted in countless opportunities for our students, and we heard examples of it earlier. To date, UTT students have benefited from cross collaborations with, with several international partners. The most recent one, of course, was Hawaii. But to indicate the company in which uh, we now have invited who are to join, we have ongoing relationship, John Hopkins Medicine International of USA. We don't have a medical faculty, but John Hopkins, of course, their work goes beyond just the training of, of doctors. They have a general interest in health across the whole, and we have worked with them and continue to work with them in certain areas of health administration, research. For example, we had a joint study about the prevalence of diabetes in Trinidad and Tobago, which UTT, not fact of medicine at, UT, at UE, but UTT joined with them. And that relationship with John Hopkins continues. Very early, we developed a relationship with the University of Cambridge of the United Kingdom, mainly focusing on manufacturing uh, and the development of entrepreneurship. We also have relationship, University of Prince Edward Island, Sheridan College Institute of Technology, Advanced Learning Canada, Parallel 14 in Martinique, and of course today we welcome to this community who are technologies of China. A small university in a small 
country has to seek these relationships and these partners, partnerships that brings benefit to both sides. And we're hoping as we develop and strengthen and deepen this relationship with Hawaii, there will be benefits to both parties. The MU that will be signed today symbolizes a commitment to further develop future ITT professionals and technical, technological innovators. In an increasing, shrinking, and fast-paced world, technological innovations are happening with increased speed. I remember some, maybe as much as 10 years ago, when I was involved in the setting up of the ETEC uh, Industrial Park in Tamina, we invited an expert, I think from the UK, and to advise us on what is needed, what, what will make a industrial park um, different and attract industry, which is what it's meant to do. Uh, we in Trinidad and Tobago have over the years developed several industrial parks, there are at least 20 now, and these were meant to accommodate uh, low-level manufacturing and some service sectors, and they did their job and they still exist. But when we looked at Tamina Park, where the university is going to be called, going to be located, we had the view that something here had to be very different. So we had an expert who came down, and we asked him, what is the key to success of an industrial park in our part of the world? And his answer was very simple. First class communication at almost zero cost. He said your communications should be set up in your park and it can be, it would almost be like air. A new investor coming there, a new industry coming there will not have to think whether it's there, they'll assume it's there and wouldn't consider the cost of it. It will also be so attractively priced that it becomes a very small part of his total investment. And that is a message that I continue to convey. I'm no longer involved with e-tech, but it's a message that continues to, to, uh, in this modern world to convey. And a company like Hawaii, I think, can assist in achieving that goal. We do have this beautiful industrial park uh, at Tamina, um, but if you drive through there, it's a beautifully laid out infrastructure. It's where the university is, and our construction is ongoing there. If those of you have not visited there, you'll see our construction ongoing. But at this point, there's nothing else. And I, I come back to the point, uh, beautiful infrastructure, good access, a good pool of skilled labor not far away, Arima Sandy Grandi. But at the end of the day, you have to have that little extra to attract industry. And what we're told that extra should be first class communication at very, very competitively priced. <clears throat> that has not happened as yet. And maybe it's a challenge that Hawaii may want to look at and talk to us at ETEC or talk to ETEC about how best this can happen. So communication, particularly with a small isolated island, um, is very, very important. And that brings me to the MOU. Symbolizes a commitment to further develop ICT, not just as a subject, but the training of professionals and tech technological innovators. In an increasing, shrinking, and fast-paced world, these innovations are happening with incredible speed. For UTT, we must confront perceived challenges by aligning ourselves with visionary global leaders and organizations that have built the pillars of sustainability and innovation. Hence today's event, hence today's uh, signing of an MOU with Hawaii. Our students, of course, as we heard earlier, have already begun 
to sow the seeds of UT and Huawei, Huawei Technologies Partnership. It was in, I think, only last year, October, that Huawei Technology TT hosted four students from UT's ICT program in the Seeds of the Future program at its headquarters in China. With this opportunity, UTT students who are here with us this morning, and maybe they're still up once before, maybe we can see them again. Uh, who are the UTT students who did go to China? How many of you are here? Well, nice seeing you again, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, they were able to acquire practical and theoretical knowledge of ICT at a world-class facility in China. This unique opportunity afforded these talented students an enriching education experience and cultural change. And I hope that these students will spread the word in all, sense, in all forms and fashion. For UTT students, I'm certain that participation in the Seeds of the Future program has deepened your knowledge of ICT in a global context, and very few local tertiary-level students can claim this type of university experience. It is my hope that many more of our ICT students are also given this opportunity in the future. As the National University of Trinidad and Tobago, UCT does not exist in isolation. We are fully aware of the pivotal outreach role the university plays in relation to the wider community. This also extends to designing and de delivering programs that support the economic diversification of our economy and establish the foundation for a knowledge-based society. When UTD was first considered, when the government first looked at university and felt it could afford another university, it was a very deliberate decision to ensure that this university focused on national objectives. We already had UWI, which had a very good reputation and continues to do excellent work. And in a way, we didn't want a UE2, that was a UE1. So the setting up of UTT it took a year of thinking and deciding exactly what should a second university do in Trinidad and Tobago. And basically, one came up with a very clear mandate to design, develop programs that support the economic diversification of the economy and establish the foundation of a knowledge-based society. So for example, if you went to a uh, um, UE graduation, and there's nothing wrong with this, you'll see several chemists, physicists, mathematicians, biologists graduating. And they perform a very definite need. You will not find those at UTT. You'd find graduates in several programs. And each program that is supported at UTT fits in to a national objective. So whether it's in food production, utility engineering, uh, these are all areas that will have a direct impact on national objectives. It is therefore imperative that we actively pursue strategic alliances such as these, which not only serve to provide our students with a competitive advantage and the necessary practical skills that are required for this world of work, but also acts to raise the profile of UTT internationally and regionally. In closing, I believe that today's signing of an MOU is only the beginning. An MOU is only the beginning of a fruitful and rewarding relationship for both institutions. It is excited to work with Hawaii Technologies for the benefit of our students and for future engagement, innovative research and development. Soon, we'll be hosting the inauguration of UTT's signature and main campus at Tamina. And those of you who have not had a chance to visit that, you should make a little effort very easy to find, just continue on the Church of Roosevelt Highway until you can't go any further. <laughs> and to the right of it, you'll see probably the best kept secret in Trinidad, a complex of magnificent buildings coming out. 
And that's where the UTT campus will eventually be. And we'll soon have the inauguration of that campus. This is provide evidence that we are in an area of great development and modernity at UTT. One that will benefit our students and staff. At UTT will continue to use information and communication technology wisely to further the objectives of our students and the University of Hull. Special thanks to His Excellency, who are representative and our president, and particularly special thanks for you being here to get a glimpse of what the future holds, not just for you today, but for Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you.